Hello viewers. Today's video we're going to try to be uh, reviving this Whirlpool refrigerator. Um, I've had this about two years. Uh, it's mostly been sitting in storage, but um, I bought it two years ago, back in 2020, I think, or into 2019, somewhere in that range. But the reason being, because um, I got it for dirt cheap, pretty much. Um, I paid $5 for it. And the reason for that is because apparently the refrigerant has leaked out of it somewhere. Um, now, this is a pretty decent size refrigerator. I'm not sure the cubic feet exactly, but this is a 2016 model. Let's take a look inside. As you can see, it's pretty much brand new. Um, but unfortunately, for some reason, it leaked out all of its refrigerant. So today, we're going to be trying to fix that. Now, if you look in here, here's your manufacture date, August 2016. Uh, we got 134A, the refrigerant, 4.9 ounces. Um, now, it's pretty clean. Uh, now, it does have a little bit of mold dent sitting down there. You can probably see just because it's been sitting so long. Um, I put those little, um, whatchamacallit, it's like those uh, silicon bead things where it's supposed to absorb moisture, doesn't use power. You put them in your closet or your safes. So, put those in here um, from the whole time it was in storage to kind of eliminate as much mold growth or moisture buildup in here as possible um, to prevent so I don't have to re-clean everything out but um, but yeah so all our components are going to be down here and what we're going to be using to do this is a bullet piercing valve which looks like this on the image there um, and I'll put the links down in the description below. Um, some standard, I got this at Walmart, automotive 134A, well it doesn't specifically, it says for automotive AC systems only, but this is just the plain stuff, no leak sealer, no none of that stuff, so it's just plain Jane 134A. And our little test gauge here, which also, I'll put the link down in the description for this. And then our connections to connect to the bullet piercing valve. Now, what this does is you're going to take that, that piercing valve. You're going to... This is our suction line, by the way. Usually, by the way, um, I should mention, sometimes you might want to get your uh, schematic or whatever. Mine was stuck down in here for whatever reason. There's a piece of paper there or something. Um, and it told me, you know, if you're not sure which is your suction and compression, usually your suction line is the biggest one, and your compression one will be like this. It's very small, and it's a steel line, uh, but everything else will be copper. Um, this is the factory port. won't be using that, um, but we need our suction line. So, this is our suction line here. Uh, of course, there's our little expansion. And I did, at the time, pressure test. Uh, well, not pressure test but like turn it on and try to let it build up pressure what was left inside and I sprayed some soap and water around all these connections I, I got nothing and I even inspected the inside so I don't know worst case scenario uh, this video is a fail because the compressor is dead the compressor had failed but I don't think that's the case because I can actually hear like the oil that's up in the evaporator that hasn't been brought back down because the uh, refrigerant was so low um, or the accumulator is like an accumulator up top so um, you can actually hear pressure building up and the compressor does kind of draw about maybe just an amp of power or so when I tested it so it seems to be healthy to me in my opinion it's building up pressure even though there's no refrigerant so but um, I'm gonna pause the video and get this opened up for you so you can take a closer look so inside package we got our little valve this is what clamps around the pipe you got your gasket up there you got your fill port so you're going to tighten these down you're going to take these out and then put this around the actual pipe itself and then you're going to get the uh, allen wrench also they do give you well, besides the allen wrench uh, these little adapters for smaller pipes 
right here so you'll just slide those down you see that little um, bump at the bottom right there that little hole so you'll these will seat in place they got like a little dimple on them to hold these in place while you tighten it down so let me get this out for you um so it did say I think the yeah so for a quarter inch five sixteenths half inch three eighths so yeah um the total price for this was like seven bucks on Amazon like I said I'll put the link down in the description and then the our gauge here adapter which we need this in order to adapt to this. Now also, uh, oh, this was like, I think $24, something like that. Um, but when you go in the description, when I link it, you'll see the products, but it'll also say people also bought. And there's like this blue adapter piece. Do not buy that. You don't need that for the uh, for these type of cans. Um, this just mates right on there. It's fine. Uh, reason being is when I bought one already and I tried it and as soon as I with the valve closed with this open You know turned all the way up in the closed position as soon as I start screwing this down It just starts spraying refrigerant everywhere So it's not for this do not need that blue piece for this style of can Not sure why people or why they re recommending that when it doesn't need it Not sure So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna hook it up turn the system on and then we're going to go to 134A, and then I'm going to open up the refrigerator, both doors, have them open, let ambient air come in. So right now it's about 50 degrees outside today, maybe 51, so we should be about 50 PSI, am I correct? No, so 134A, 50, well about 45, 45, 46, 47 PSI. Hopefully if I'm doing that correct. If not, correct me down in the comments, so... Also, you're going to be doing this at your own risk. Um, just saying, if you screw up, I'm not responsible for damaged um, components or products. So, I'm going to pause the video again, and I'm going to get this adapter on there. Try to tighten this thing down, and I'll be back. Okay, so I got our little valve on. Uh, as you can see, I kind of had it pointing this way, because I don't want it sticking out. So, if ever you put the refrigerator against the wall, you don't want it hitting this. You know, possibly causing another issue or completely messing up the whole system. Uh, breaking these joints or whatever. So, now all I need to do, I'm going to read these instructions really quick. Okay. Until it is firmly seated. So keep going until it stops. Like that. Okay. So. Make sure that is closed. Um, and then. No more than two full turns. So then we're going to go back. No more than two full turns. But. We are going to. This is in the closed position by the way. So now, I'm going to take our can, now we're going to hook this up into this, make sure it's nice and tight. Alright, and then, so, let's start here so one two okay as we can see there is no pressure whatsoever in this thing now I guess I'll just bleed a little bit in there Just a little bit. Also, I should mention, do not, under any circumstances, turn this can upside down like this with this open. You will abs you could possibly completely destroy this compressor. Reason being is, it's a little science here I'm going to explain to you. Um, this is a 
you know, the the boiling point of this liquid is, you know, like below zero, like negative 40 and colder, depending on the type. But the reason why it's a liquid in this can is because it's under pressure. It's reached its equilibrium. And when you pour it in or when you open this valve, you're now releasing it to the atmosphere. So atmospheric pressure, a lower pressure than what's in this can. And because it has a lower boiling point, it has that ability to vaporize back from a, li from a liquid back to a vapor. Um, same goes for any flammable liquid such as propane or butane or whatever, any type of or whatever refrigerant. But if you dump it upside down like this, um, you get large amounts of, you know, liquid, so to say, as a refrigerant. It's called a uh, flash steam. So what will happen is you'll get a sudden surge or spike of pressure as this is rapidly uh, evaporating in the system because this is at a lower pressure usually well in this case this is completely empty so and you'll almost get like a hammering effect as if you know like with um, old copper pipes or water fixtures where you got a high pressure and you shut the valve off it slams the pipes well same situation here but we're talking a bigger scale we're talking over 100 psi and what will happen is when you suddenly do that you flood it in as a liquid it'll flash over into a vapor so quick that it can actually blow out the reed valves and damage any other components almost similar as well as like a think of it as like a knocking in an engine or a detonation same thing here so you do not want to have this upside down you always want to keep it upright and have it go in as a vapor not a liquid and you want to do it slow a little bit at a time so we're going to just slowly this make sure this is set up just keep it in okay now we're getting some pressures good And we're good, so it's holding. So this is most likely a slow, slow leak. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the compressor on. Ooh. Slowly turn this all the way up. Open this up so that it is at its maximum. And what we should see is our pressure drop. tight space and so our compressor is working it's drawing a vacuum We turn it off and we see now it pulls a vacuum. So I can hear the compressor uh, bogging down. <clears throat> so that means it's uh, building up pressure and it's under load now. I don't know if you can, I can, I can hear it in person, but I, I, I don't know if you can hear it, but the, uh, I can hear the load increasing on the compressor. Turn it down.
Takes four ounces. All right, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna come back uh, when we start getting there. All right, so I come across a little issue here. The only problem is, is over time this can gets really cold and the pressure is low. So I wouldn't say to do this, but um, if you want, you could possibly get like a warm bucket of water and just kind of set this in there to keep it above temperature. But um, as you can see here, it is causing a vacuum, so it's working. It's holding pretty good. And I just went around and checked. It is definitely blowing out some cold air now. Way better than it was before doing this. I should have done it before and after, but I don't have a thermometer on me, so I just kind of got to take my word for it. So I'm going to pause the video and continue letting this do its thing, and I'll be back shortly. Alright, so hand fill, it is getting pretty frigid behind this wall here and there's some pretty cold air coming out of this. It's not freezing freezing, but it's definitely like 20 to, 20 to 30 degrees colder than ambient. You can probably actually hear it. <clears throat> you probably hear it hissing as it's going through there. So we're definitely achieved, we definitely achieved getting this thing working again. And I should probably go get a thermometer. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go, I took the can off, I closed the valve, took the can off. Before, make sure you do that, so if you do, I forgot to tell you this. Whenever you do take this valve off, the bottle off the valve, make sure you close that valve back because it will just continue to streetle back feed. Because this, although this is a shutoff, that's just for the shutoff coming in but not out. Um, but this is always open, this little service valve thing here. I should just mention that. But I'm going to go take that can, get a thing of warm water, and hopefully we can speed this process up again. Okay, and we are back. So, got my bucket of warm water. I'm going to open this back up. So, no more than two full turns. One. Two. There we go, it's a little bit more better. Alright, let's go over here to our uh I got I did find a thermometer by the way, so 45 degrees. Got our probe up in there coming out. Must be a little bit colder. So I guess I'm gonna just sit here. I'm gonna pause the video again and just keep on going until that temperature starts dropping down. Alright, I'm back. I've been sitting here for about five minutes, just continuously letting this purge. And as you can see now, we're holding a steady pressure. And I don't know if you can tell also the compressor is a lot louder. And you can also feel by the high side, this is getting pretty hot. So that's a good sign that we're getting close to our uh, four ounces of filling. So I'm going to just do this again. Just let it hold there. And then when it equalizes, you'll see it's going to hover around, it's going to equalize out. It's just going to kind of stay right in here, but we needed to get it to about, because it's 50 degrees outside, so we need to get about right there. And as you can see, it's just kind of leveling out there. So we're going to hold there. And uh, I'll come back when, we, uh, when I think we're good. Alright, um, I put everything up. Um, all you do is just close this back until it stops. Don't over tighten it, because you can damage it. And don't, when you are filling it, back it out. Uh, two t no more than two times because then you could have this pop out and you know you just have to start all over because that's going to blast all your refrigerant out. But just put the seal back on. I'll show you guys. It, it does have a gasket, so it does have a gasket down in there. So if for some instance this doesn't make a proper seal necessarily, um, you don't necessarily have to really worry about this leaking all your refrigerant back out. Compressor's getting warm. It's loud. I you can hear that. I wish I had like a thermal imaging that's pretty hot now 
I only keep my fingers on there for probably about 10 seconds. Jeez. Yeah, so that's working good. This is cool. This is cool here. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Now, uh, now, measuring wise, this is a 12 ounce can. I already used some of this, so that's why this is completely empty. I know you're going to be freaking out like, oh my gosh, you put 12 ounces instead of 4. I should have mentioned in the video that this was already halfway empty. Because um, I used it for, um, of course, automotive for my car. But yeah, so anyway, <clears throat> and like I say, if you want to help speed up the process, you could use a bucket of, or a little thing of warm water. So, um, and I guess our evaporator temp is now 29 degrees. So air coming, it's not negative 29, by the way. Oh, it went away. Sometimes this thing will just say negative for whatever reason, but, but that's the air coming out of this. I'm going to let it run a little bit, let it cycle, let it do its thing. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps any anybody else out, out there.